I, I need five years to find out if that music's good. Like, it's not a... I like it. Like, I like the writing. It's an. Ex- I like the expression of the thoughts and feelings I had. But I don't like it when I think about you guys listening to it. Because it's, like, weird because you guys know me. And it's, like, the... Yeah, I'm trying to do good writing. There's some really good writing in there. Yeah. <clears throat> it's tight. I love the... The acceptance of the truth of things when I'm like, canine, that's my dental. Consequences of this life that I'm living and this truth that I'm telling lets me like see the future and it weighs on my temples, literally. It gives me headaches and migraines and it's like mm. difficult on my life. But I take that shit in stride because I'm balling out my mind. Yeah, ball outside of my mind. <laughs> that's sorry, <time>, right? <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah. Like, if and you want to. Like, ooh, that's hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Extra hard. If you want to critique like, the writing, like, mm-hmm. that shit's great, right? Like, and I think your shit's harder than my shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hard as fuck, bro. Yeah, I think your shit's at the, at the end, too. Like, uh, I'll write your names in the Mausoleum, Mausoleum Halls, Coliseum Walls. I'm ready to ball. I feel like yeah. that's some hoe shit. Like, I don't Disgusting. Even... Yeah, I like Disgusting. dropping Disgusting. The... And then the X caliber caliber, like, it's tight. It's like, because I'm talking about kind of like gory shit. So I like, it's like Coliseum Halls, but I pull like a King Arthur sword. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And also, like, the Coliseum Walls imply it's a natural implication there. It's like competition. It's not the wildy, it's the Coliseum. So, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. spreading your blood is, like, a representation of competition. Yeah, You yeah, know what I'm saying? That. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just reckless murdering. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel generalized hardness, sure, but not yeah. reckless murder. <laughs> yeah, organized murder. <laughs> Within the realm of... Comp- Mutually agreed upon <laughs> potential murder. <laughs> it just is what it is in the jungle. You gotta rumble, cuz. Yeah, rumble. If that's what you came to do, baby. Uh, Don't do the jungle. Are we on the fly? You want to start it? I don't know. I feel, I feel loose. I feel good now. Dude, my energy was so heavy till right now. Yeah. Yeah, we can get it going. We can get it going. So, uh, I'll just be able to cut it in whenever we, we link up sometime. Joe Rogan but just starts like this. Welcome in. Welcome into episode 13. Lucky 13. Give a fuck what you think about things. We're going to put it on his head. Like, yeah. Lucky 13. 13. We're coming in. We're doing things off the rip, off the cuff. I love it. Welcome in on this not Thursday. We're coming in on a different time. See? We're already doing different shit. It's a Wednesday. I'm playing on a different intro winning. on a different day with a different mic and a different set of... Oh, my God. <laughs> it's... it's. You feel that new in the air? Does everyone feel that new coming? I do. Right? Right? Right. A lot the of rain. Season, in... The new season's right on the brink. We're, like, entering summer. We're, like, right there. It's about to get hot as fuck. I felt it in the air today. I was, like, driving, and it was different. And I was, like, what? what's the date? What the hell is... Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it's, like, 531. We're getting there. We're right up... I think... In June 1st, we're going to be like, is this summer? It's coming. It's going to peek its head around the corner. It's like, ah. ah. I'm down. I'm, I'm sure we'll get a 100 degree. Or we're in Texas, so I'm sure we'll, we'll get a 100 degree day Let's fairly soon. We, we get lots, lots of those. Oh, one yeah. Of the, one of the downfalls of Texas. <laughs> the summer's going to be hot. hot. Yeah. But I'd much rather, honestly, I'd rather it be hot than, than too cold. You know, fuck being cold. I wasn't like that until a couple of years ago. I feel like I was able to adapt to just being hot all the time. Just wear short shorts and tank tops and <laughs> rock. You know what I'm saying? Let it rock. Be sweaty. Like I'd rather it be 100 than 32, for sure. Yeah. If it's 32 outside, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> That's true. You do have to live your whole life in a coat. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, bro. <laughs> a lot of your going anywhere is having to... Not like plan deal for, with yeah. what the hell's going on <laughs> yeah the, the ecosystem that you live in it's like uh, i think people who live in colder states have a higher depression rate i'm pretty sure that's a correlative stat <laughs> makes sense to me <laughs> yeah you're also going to get less vitamin d per year because you're out in the sun less right yeah you're probably out in the sun less is probably, i guess the clouds wouldn't deter the amount of vitamin d you get correct Right. I don't think so, but right. the likelihood of you being outside is lower yes. than if it's 100 degrees and sunny every day. Mm-hmm. Versus 32 degrees and usually, I'm not going outside. Fuck that. Fuck if you, that. I don't want to get in my car. I don't want to go to work. <laughs> yeah, Fuck dude. That. Like in <laughs> Buffalo, New York, that's fucking tough. Oh my God, you have to deal with that. all. I don't even know what those struggles are. People have to deal with those struggles, I'm sure. We have to deal with Texas struggles. You got to wait for the, the snow summers. plow to go yeah, to work. You got to like fucking plow your yard, or not your yard, but your driveway. Get your car accessible so you can drive it and like scrape off the fucking ice that's accumulated on your windshield. 
no thank you, dog. I'd rather be sweaty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's just me. Some I've adapted. Like, you can just put, put more clothes on. I was you born. You can only take so many clothes off when it gets so hot. You can only take so much off, you know? Yeah. Fuck that, dog. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. There's another, like, there's a lot of layers. But I, it's also, I like a balance of that. You don't want it to be hot all the time. I like to be, it's nice, it's nice to be cold sometimes. Yeah. It's like, oh, remind you. It snowed here a couple years ago. It was crazy. Like, what, 2020 or 2021? Yeah. Yeah, Have Snowmageddon. It was crazy. Snowmageddon? <laughs> yeah. Because the power grid went out while it was, while it was, it was crazy over. here in Texas. Yeah. No one had really seen that, or uh, at least a lot of the people who are native Texans had never really seen snow to that caliber before. It's like, what the hell's happening? We shut down everything. Everything's done. Even when it's about to potentially snow or ice, we're like, nope, shut it down. <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Well, we, they make a good argument when it's icy on the roads. The thing is, is in New York, they don't give a fuck. Like, yeah, it's icy every day. Well, they sal- they <laughs> also salt the roads seasons. and shit. They do have Months like... Months at a time. <laughs> Months at a time. It's icy every single day for them. They're like, what the fuck y'all talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they are better. Like, they have snow tires and shit. Like, they are better prepared for it, but... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just personally would not choose to live <laughs> in, a st- in, a, in a state... Where such conditions exist. No, I agree. You have me think. I was born in a place where it was cold a lot. Like, I feel like I was always cold. Mm -hmm. And I hated being... Or it was just like... so. It was so weird coming to Texas where it was hot all the time. Because then weather was just like... I don't want to be this hot. Like, that's just how all weather was all the time. I was like, oh, fuck this. Because I was used to... I don't know. Before, it was just like, oh, take a jacket today. Yeah. Like, it was like... You didn't really think about it. You know what but I'm saying? I'm, layer up. Just put on, like, three layers. <laughs> yeah. I'll be good. I, I don't feel that bad. Right. It was chill. Like, yeah. And then you would get a little hot. You just take a layer off. Like, yeah. you're, you were good. It's oh. like a different existence. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then I was, like, used to the layer game. And then layer I, game. I came to Texas, and it's like, just fucking... Zero layers, and the layer you got on, it's hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no escape, dog. Like walking to class at Texas State, it's like 100 degrees, and there's a literally a river running through campus. Like, it's like mm-hmm. you're in a humidifier. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it gets hot. It would just and be it's so hilly. hot. It's very oh hilly. my god, yeah. A lot of change in altitude throughout that campus. Yeah, I have a couple outfits in my duffel for the different things I had to do in the day. Like by the time you walk from the gym to your class, you're like, I gotta have another shirt ready to go. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Fine. It's like a hike. Yeah, I gotta have a sacrificial shirt for every, <laughs> every voyage. <laughs> you do. You do. I did. In my duffel, yeah, for real. And then I'd have, and then Wolf like, shirts. I started having eco plays. I'd use that shirt for the workout later. You know there what I'm saying? Go. Sacrifice <laughs> twice <laughs> my shirt. <laughs> Um. Yeah, that's a, that was a real thing. But then I, I've adapted by now. I like different game being hot. Yeah, yeah. Tank tops and short shorts. That's what I recommend. And then also, I just go to the gym before work, and that's like makes it easier to. Yeah. Then hopefully your AC is working as well. If you don't have AC in Texas in your car, or like if you're home, oh god. I didn't have AC last summer. It's rough. I it just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> like as in, sucks, man. That shit sucks because you need it in the summer. So it gets boiling. You can work on your alien stat. Boiling. <laughs> I worked on my. I was like, yeah, you, or, or you just change perspective. You just have a transportable, a mobile, mobile sauna, if you will. Yes, yes. <laughs> I did have the windows down a lot, but like it was just, I would get, un, it, I would get uncomfortable, and then it was like, yeah, life's uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suffer, bitch. It's kind of what I told myself. That's like the, of the game here. Yeah, and then in that place, I would be like. I'd have a 45 minute drive and then I'd be uncomfortable, but I'd be pushing through the discomfort. And then I'd be like listening to music and like smoking and stuff, like the vape and like just trying to catch a vibe and drinking coffee and like pushing through that shit into like the space where my energy was like, nah, I'm fucking fuck you. You're like, I'm in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. It was a, uh, that was a whole journey of life. And then uh, now I feel like the hot doesn't bother me, but I'll hang out with my sister sometimes and she's like, fuck this shit uh-huh. <laughs> and i'm like i remember that i remember that yeah and i had to like i've definitely learned to hug it i was like oh i love 100 <laughs> yeah there I you go 100 <laughs> much more than 32 32 is a cold bitch <sighs> i've got a com- complicated relationship think with not, the weather it's not that often that we've reached 32 down here that's nice not very often yeah i like it when it happens because i do want to wear my cold wear you know what i'm saying i want to bust out it the- is a whole different attire game and a whole different <laughs> i guess yeah you have to tackle it differently as far as what you have to wear. Right. In cold, you have to wear stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, like gloves. You never... uh, or not. Like if, if not, you're just going to be cold. But I guess maybe some people have cold like, and their stupid. genetics. Maybe like, you know, through their prior generations have developed just like a, a grit for the cold, you know? 
Yeah, but like more, uh, maybe more of a tolerance. Like if you send your kid to school without a jacket, like society's gonna call you a bad parent. Here in America. <laughs> in <Russia. laughs> That's where my mind went to. Ice bath. <laughs> Take shower and cold plunge. <laughs> in December. <laughs> yes. Yes, I, so I get sure that. Like that other, other places for sure. I mean, yeah. I, Cold as fuck. I mean, that's tight. Anything that's like, <laughs> anything that's developing your metal is like sick, but. Yeah, you're right. Maybe we're just you know, fucking. Some people yeah, definitely have a different uh, tolerance, I'm sure, a pre- predisposition genetically. Definitely. Somehow. Definitely. But I also think you can change your. Oh, for sure. You, yeah. you, can, you can help. Uh, yeah, change your genetics. Or not your genetics, but your, your genes, I guess, like how your genes are acting. Yes, that's what. That's wow. Yeah. Well done. That is what that is what it is, right? Because Epi- epigenetics. You can, yeah, yeah, something like that. Something like that. I don't know for sure, but that because you adapt, and then if you adapt well, then that's the DNA that your shit is going to help get passed down. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's part of your. Or I think your mind also creates the environment that the genes are in, and they respond to the environment. You know, mm. that's tight. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that's how the genetic works. I'm like, I'm summing it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's like that. And then if you combine that with hereditary DNA, mm-hmm. it's worth it to try to adapt and evolve as far as you can go. Yeah, push yourself to your to your max. Yeah, it's, it's gonna it goes somewhere to your limit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so yeah. into that. Awesome. I don't know why I'm sitting here justifying. I, I like doing the alien work. I'm into that shit. I'm like, this shit's gonna Alien go. Shit. I'm yes. trying to get these genes on some weird shit. Like, <laughs> that's that's genuinely how I think. Like, trying to pass down some crazy DNA. I'll be trying to open up my fucking self so that I can be like pure energy, massive pure energy, massive. Yo. Because then my life becomes more of an LSD experience, and it's fucking nuts, bro. It's like, mm. I remember my spirit. Like, I always wanted to have what I deemed like a life worth living. It, like, I didn't quite put it like that but i was like dreaming big as a kid Mm -hmm. on one of the podcasts we talk about i wanted to be a lion yes and (laughs) in the nfl (laughs) yeah that to say also caveat oh never mind (laughs) there's no more i'm in some other shit (laughs) fuck that caveat we're in some other shit now keep it moving uh like i always i always wanted to like I don't know what it was that I was trying to do, I, but then I remember specifically there was a point in my life where I was really low and feeling like really broken because like shit wasn't quite going exactly how I wanted to, to go as far as playing sports professionally. And then I had like opportunities, but also there was just like other shit. I just wasn't, ah, I was feeling really low. Mm-hmm. And the feeling that arose out of me was like, I just want a life that's worth living. Like it's a lot of fucking suffer out here. Yes. Like a fuck ton of suffer. Yeah. And I like to a level. This shit ain't sweet. Yes. None of this is sweet. But I trust God. But God can make it sweet. I trust God. Like, this isn't by this isn't a faulty design. There's not a flaw in this shit. Yes. Yes, there's a lot of suffer. Yes. But it's not a fucking flaw. Like, so it, in that wake of like all of that shit, in that moment where my energy was like willing to like cry out for help, basically, I felt like. Mm-hmm. I think what it was is that I just like fucking failed my classes and I was going to lose my financial aid and then I was going to have to break that news to my dad. And then it was likely that I was going to take like a semester off of school. So it was like perceptions and models of you know, just cr- like crumble, crumbling, crumble cookie. Dog. Yeah, deal with that. And it's heavy. This shit, this shit sucks. <laughs> this shit can suck. Yeah, like I don't, know, heavy. I don't know if my girl was going to stay with me. Existing is hard. I don't know if I was going to get to live with my friends anymore. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was my fucking whole thing going on. Yeah. And I was fighting for that shit. I wanted my own goddamn life. Like, I remember that was really important to me at a young age was to, like, build my own kingdom, my own domain. I, I, like, I want a stake in this thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But then in that moment, I was like, whenever it was all, when it all oh, falls down, it was falling <laughs> it falls down. down, who you gonna call now? I was calling Jesus, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Good Lord, my Savior, my love. This is Matthew, and I would like to have a life worth living because this hurts a lot, and I'm down to like. Does that even exist? Does that even exist? If it does, gonna have one. Yes, and that was like post surgery. I don't know what time frame exactly. It was when we when I was when we were living in Sagewood. Yeah, back in our San Marcos, Texas State days, somewhere probably around like 2013, 12, 14, 2014, somewhere in that time frame. Man. And uh, 
it was just really intense. It felt like a fucking Oprah Winfrey moment for me where I was just like, I, I, like, I want that. Like, I'm willing to bear a cross. I'm willing to bear my fucking cross, which is a heavy fucking cross. I don't know if it's heavier than other people's, but it feels heavy as fuck. You know what I'm mm. saying? Don't feel light. But I'm down. But, like, I want it to, you know what I'm saying, have that thing. And um, a life worth living. Yes. The thing that justifies all the suffering that I'm feeling. Yes. Mm. And that thing, uh, so whenever I say that, like, I'm in this pr- pursuit of opening myself up to this really pure energy and trying to live this, like, psychedelic-esque experience, not that I'm pursuing that, but, like, that's what I've identified and recognized this thing to be. And by psychedelic-esque, you mean just, like, synchronistic and, like, serendipitous within thoughts you think, things you desire, then, like, the way life plays out and the timing of all that coinciding. <sighs> okay, so I guess... The- what do you mean? Yes. Like, but I felt like I had discovered that like two or three years ago when I was living with, um, on El Sendero mm-hmm. and, uh, with Voss, shout out Voss. Sometimes I just want to give you guys privacy. That's my dog. It's not because I don't love you. I, I, I just appreciate privacy sometimes. So I just, Gary Voss, to... you're my dog. Yeah. I fucking love you, boy. <laughs> Go listen to the code. The code. That's my dog. Goes to Brazil. <laughs> okay. So, out. uh, I felt like I was kind of tapped into that super in tunely in that moment during those days. Like I had kind of like felt that out. Right. Yeah. But then, like, as that thing and yet or like matured in its own regard to itself, mm-hmm. the way that it evolved to me ever presently is become just more like it's not. It, it is like you, your inner matrix does create your reality, and in your energy ties do reciprocate, and it does happen synchronistically. But it's just like I feel like the way that like God talks. I guess there's just, it's just so. In between three years ago and now, I've opened myself up more, and I feel like my energy is more clean and more large. And so the synchronicities that happen, like I can't really look at like numbers appearing to me and ha- and tying that to a yes or no or any kind of like feeling of I'm going down the right path anymore because mm-hmm. that was like light for me. That's like um like one on one synchronicity. And then I feel like other friends start to like uncover those truths and those things are revealing themselves to them. And then yeah. I, I'm like, I remember going through that phase. It's a whole journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'm know like, what I'm oh, saying? I'm a- yeah, 100%. Right? It's like, uh. so within, but then now it's like, this. I'm in like the doctorate program now for that. And I'm not mm-hmm. talking shit. I'm not talking shit. I just like stayed in the course. No, it's just like, yeah, like we're, it's like, we're all watching the movie of life. And it's like, oh, I remember whenever that, that part in the movie of life, like I'm, I'm still watching that movie. It's still going on. I've been watching it for a while. But I remember where I was when I watched that scene that you watched or whatever, you know? Yes, 100% to the max. Like, yeah. yes. And then just like... It clicked for me the same way it clicked for them. So. No, just 100%. I'm sorry. I'm trying to describe something like really abstract. And also just like something that I feel is like this is literally the most like the most honest I could be with anybody in the world. It's like hard to describe this shit that I'm like in real time experiencing with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. But... Uh, safe space. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. Give a fuck. I hope you like our waters. Yeah, the waters we're, are warm. We're kind of in outer space right now. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are down for that, but we're out here. This is as yeah. abstract as I get. The waters are cold, actually. We're in space. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the cosmos. Hot tub in the cosmos, dog. Yeah. It's fine. We're good. Yeah, we're chilling. No, 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 but I feel like, um, okay, I feel like your life is tailor-made for for everybody specifically, if you're willing to tap into it. Mm-hmm. It's like whether, I think... It's like the way your demons are your demons, it's like, that sucks. Your hell is specific to you. Like that truth. Your struggles are your struggles. Yes. And they're going to hurt you. Other people can empathize, but they're your struggles. Yes. And a lot of times they hurt you in a way that it wouldn't hurt someone else. Like it hurts because it's it's the imprint of your pain creates your struggle. So it. Through your interpretation. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah right because someone yeah. else's interpretation wouldn't even yeah necessarily see the same it, they thing. wouldn't feel any of the emotional none rip of that. that your story tells to you like if you were to have live your life out and then write it all out and then you were to read your story like you would be so emotionally attached to reading every word versus someone else reading your story they wouldn't be they could empathize but it wouldn't be anywhere near the same unless it's well written like forrest gump you know what i'm saying yeah i guess so but like no but but you think there is a there is a a disconnect, not dis- not disconnect in a bad way because it has a negative connotation, but disconnect in the sense of like the bare naked truth that like my existence is my existence. Oh, God. And what you eat don't make me shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what you live don't make me fit. Who you fuck don't make me come. Yeah. <laughs> I heard Jake Cole say that last night in a song. I was just listening to that song. It's yeah. crazy, bro. Truth. There's a bare naked truth to that. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Mm-hmm. You live alone, you die alone. But yeah, so it's your pain and your suck. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. 
That's okay, okay, but, but, but <laughs> juxtapose. Okay. Now, now hold that. That shit's heavy. Hold it. It's fucking hot. Hold it's it. heavy, bro. Sorry, we're yelling at <laughs> you. It's dark matter. You must, you must, because here's the thing. You must is, contend with you this. You must contend with this, dog. Make it a meme. Like, you must contend with this. <laughs> My friends, yes. I, I fucking love you. Look, I don't want to take the medicine either, dog. I don't mm. like the way it tastes. I have the same impulses. Like, mm. and except for when I develop my alien stat, which is a big underlying motif of all of this shit that I'm telling you is that the alien stat is worth developing because of all of this shit is pretty nuts. We're in space. Well, we're looking in sp- at all this shit <laughs> because of the alien stat. <laughs> okay, you're with me. I'm with you. Hold They're on. with us. The thing that juxtaposes that and the thing that makes it like... To me, makes life like I, I it, when I appreciate it, life is so beautiful. Like words aren't even enough. It's like glorious. It's psychedelic. Like it's, um, your heaven is your heaven. Like it, it's specific to you too. Like, and then it's like something you would love only in a way that you would love, because you, or you know, just tailor made for you. Exactly. That's the thing is, it's tailor made for you. So the same way that your pain would create like your negative consequences, I think it's like your light creates your positive consequences. Mm -hmm, And then mm -hmm. when those positive consequences and and like, I don't know, the only way that like the only way I can sleep at night knowing that I'm pursuing that thing is to genuinely try my hardest to every day play my best game so that my energy force is going more up than down every day, like more towards the light and less towards my hell. Mm hmm. And um and I really live or die by that. Like I'm 100%. fucking selling out, dog. Like 100%. I'll sell out arena selling out on the baseline. <laughs> like <laughs> Yes, man. A lot of what we're talking about too is uh we've already mentioned him many times before, but Jordan Peterson. A lot of what we're talking yes. about is Jordan Peterson inspired gospel. Influenced words. <laughs> the gospel of Jordan, bro. I mean, but it's so the true. Book of like I'm sitting here telling you my truest truth. Like I was sitting down on the floor crying my eyes out, like, God, I don't this is too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah, and I think or the crazy thing is or the, one of the crazier thing is things is that that moment in your life and uh, also some of the like this things that happened in our life before we were exposed to jordan peterson like that was mulling in our lives before we met him or were introduced to him and then through his like just like listening to his lectures and seeing him on joe rogan and whatnot and hearing him talk about the way he talks about life in the bible and stuff like that it's like he was able to connect dots that were like already i was already like connecting like there were there were past experiences it's not like we were like listening to it and being like oh let me go like Except this new idea. It was more like, oh, like, I know, like, that is, that's it. That's it. What he is saying, like, that's the thing that's, like, going in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's like a, where he's like, like, you have to develop a hell, like, or develop a hell and, like, develop a heaven, like, strive to the heaven and, like, have the like, ultimate positive or a positive and negative motivating forces to be fully motiv- motivated to do whatever. And it's like, oh, I felt that. Like, I know yes. I developed that ideology, but I didn't have that verbiage for it before, I, like, he was introduced. And then he's, like, kind of just, like hit shit on the head for me and i was like oh my god that, is- yeah that's the thing that's crazy right is that yeah. it's like already in you yeah you experience what he, what he like some of the stuff that he's preaching now and has been for a while but like before we heard it like you experienced that back in when 2012 2013 and like yeah. we weren't even listening to him till like 2017 2018 yeah it's like six years later it's like like oh shit and it helps so hit much. the nail on the head yeah it was gripping in that sense where i was like damn he's got me yeah the same way the last dance i was like he's got me like <laughs> he's got me. there's there's like you know too much about me you know what i'm saying like that's the thing like how can i look away like that's the feeling i get with jordan peterson i'm like fuck you're talking to my soul yeah like something within me stands at more more of an attention you yeah know what I'm saying? and then i was like oh what's going on I said the last dance too, just because like I don't I fuck with Michael Jordan because like it's not just that I don't want to be like Mike. It's like he says some shit and I'm like fuck, dude. That's exactly that's exactly how I think. Mm-hmm. Like that's just true to me too. Like when I'm not being a bitch, I agree with that more than I would agree with any other statement in the realm contending for thought idea about those things. Like yeah. I just agree with him. My spirit says like that's correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not personal to some degree. It's it not, is, but it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not fanhood per se. The fanhood develops because of that shit. I'm like, God mm. damn, he's a man. Like, yeah, yes, he yeah, says it yeah, with his chest. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, right? Yeah, the the fanhood develops afterwards, or I guess before. I don't know. For me, it was it was after. Like I'm saying, because I wouldn't have been a fan of Jordan Peterson if he didn't fucking. And then, like, I wasn't a Michael Jordan fan until I watched the Last Dance, and he like just had me. Like, I was like, like. 
like in a good movie, like the protagonist grips you and you're like ride mm-hmm. or dying with that guy and you, you really want to see him win it. Like that's how Mike had me. Like, or I don't even want to call him Mike, but we were saying be, be like Mike. <laughs> I would never call him that. I, I go by Matthew. Mr. I call Jordan. him Michael. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. <laughs> Mr. Jordan. <laughs> Please, Mr. Jordan. Mr. Yeah. Six. <laughs> Six and oh. Um But or I guess I was referring more to the idea of like uh like if, if do I like Michael Jordan because he says cool things or like does a the, does what he say, do I empathize with what he says, and because I empathize with what he says, I like Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Say it again. It's like like do I just like like Michael Jordan directly and like because I like Michael Jordan directly and be like what he does like I'll like the things that he says and I'm like yeah th- those are good things to say I, I agree with those things that he says because I think Michael Jordan's cool but like I think or it could be like reverse it's like I empathize with the things that he says like if they, if they were just quotes about mentality before before you even assi- associated the quote it's like I, I assign myself with these quotes and these ideologies who said them oh Michael Jordan I fuck with that guy that's exactly what it is because I wasn't a Michael Jordan fan until I saw The Last Dance. Yes. And then the when, the way he spoke about things is mm-hmm. what I was like, I, I love this spirit. Like, I want to be like this. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be necessarily flying on people and dunking on people with my tongue out or like embarrassing. Yelling at people in practice and trying to not belittle people to some degree, but kind of like egg people on to, to, to toughen up, to get some teeth, to get some grip, especially whenever they were trying to take over the fucking, the bad boys. We have to toughen up, dog. <laughs> dog, they're gonna beat the shit out of us. Like they're gonna take us to war. Mm-hmm. It's it was the most brutal shit Michael Jordan ever ever seen. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. So he had to be kind of what some people would deem to be like an asshole in in reg- in regards to social interaction during practice and things like that. What's an what's an asshole? <laughs> That's my question for you, people. Like what? Yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. if I'm turned at I'm practice, <laughs> right? No, no. But I, okay, well, that, no, but sorry. I jumped to thought B. Thought A was that's the critique on Michael Jordan. Yeah. The critique on Michael Jordan is that. Well, why would you want to be a tyrant? Literally, someone close to me knows that I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I've basically told them I, 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 you know, I rock with my dad and I rock with Michael Jordan. And, I, and I'd add Jordan Peterson to that list. But like and the the intro is I rock with my dad and I rock with Michael Jordan. When I come in the house, my dad, he's pretty busy. He'd rather come to me after he finishes what he's doing. If you go into a steakhouse and you don't stop at Michael Jordan's table, he's going to drop 60 on your bitch ass. What do you like? You want me to come up and say hello to you when I'm here, or would you rather me wait until you're not busy? Like <laughs> that's the, that's the bit that I did, right? Okay. But there's a truth in there that like I'm rocking with my dad on Michael Jordan because there's a thing in me that's just like I kind of feel like I am that thing. Like I just ideas that they represent. Yeah, like they they're making a good life out of that thing that they are, and like I kind of am that thing too, and I feel like I have to make a good life out of it, or like there's not a lot of option. Because if you agree with something, but then your language of your body and your life disagrees with it, you create chaos in your life. Mm. So you have to ride or die with your truth. Mm. And then you have to hope that you can build a ship that sustains that. Because yeah. otherwise, if Michael Jordan doesn't win six rings, maybe everybody just fucks and hates him. <laughs> like, if he wasn't good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe they just say, fuck that guy. And yeah. he dies in history. Ooh. Kobe Bryant, if he doesn't fucking become the Mamba, yeah. that guy's a fucking prick, bro. Like... <laughs> I love you, Kobe. I hang out with Kobe all the time. But love like, you, Kobe. You're okay. a prick. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a thing that like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, the pushing... I guess there needs to be... Maybe not needs to be, but ideally you would be pushing for a reason. There'd be a reason for it. And I guess the reason is... The validating reason is the championships. The dubs. The legacy. The fact that everyone says they're great people. Mm. That, they're, that they're legends. Like, Isn't that proof in its own pudding? That that shit's important to a degree? Yeah. Like, it's nuts. It's nuts. Global phenoms. But backtracking back to just, like, I want to get back to what you were saying, uh, but some people would deem that behavior tyrannical. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, people that are close to me know that I fuck with Michael Jordan, and then they kind of were, one person was like, Michael Jordan was kind of a tyrant. Like, maybe I want to be like Mike, and maybe maybe this place place would be good if we were like the Bulls, but I don't want to be a tyrant. And I'm like, me neither. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> me, me neither dog I don't think Michael Jordan did either necessarily I think he maybe just deemed that the price to pay I guess the thought that follows that is like what, what what's an asshole and then it, it, like if you come in and you're turned at practice and you're pushing the tempo and you're pushing the pace and you've got the highest energy today and it's, and we're on Justin and you fucking ball out your mind like Jason Tatum's just going fucking in at practice <laughs> what are you gonna be like oh god this fucking guy 
prick. Yeah, what the what fuck? What a tryhard. <laughs> yeah, what? No, get that guy off my roster. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, 100%. it's hard to say. It's a balance. It's a balance. Because I think there's a line between like the, maybe not playful, but like the competitive nature and jesting somebody to bring out a better side of their competitive self. It's like, I need you to be more right now, bro. I'm trying to, we're trying to be better. So I need you to be like, this, this is the iron sharpening the iron right now. Like, yeah. This is like the king. Like, this shit hurts. Like, you know, like, king. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. every time Clash. it's like, king. Clash. Hopefully it's fucking, yeah. Hopefully we sharpen each other through that. Yeah. But like, that's in the Bible. That's holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> but sorry. But, but, but seriously. But yeah, but, but, but this fine line between treading that and pushing that envelope versus maybe overstepping that bound and be like getting a. Uh, Maybe like overheated or over emotion, over emotionally involved because mm. of some other shit or whatever, you know, and making it like disrespectful or like it escalating to like physical violence. True. <laughs> Same with, with like Steve Kerr or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Well, yeah, Steve Kerr. You pun- are you Michael Jordan punched him in the face or something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what happens is Michael Jordan fouls the shit out of Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr pushes Michael Jordan like Superman chest push. Fuck you push. Michael just come back, hits him in the face. Get the fuck out of my face, pussy. <laughs> That's nature. That's nature. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who you who you touching? Who you touching? But like, unfortunately, like you're right. That that is nature. There is a line. But you, you they cross the line into the dangerous nature. Yeah, you and, know what and, I'm saying? And, and they, I think it, doing that, then recognizing it, addressing it, and then reconciling it, strengthen the relationship actually. What's that, Steve? I would, I would love to ask Steve Kerr that question. I'd love to ask yes, Michael these I, questions. I think, I think they, they say that on the, on the sheesh. They say that? That's yeah, hard. I'm pretty sure. That's hard. I would almost bet my life on it. Well, Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr said part of the reason the dubs couldn't get done in the playoffs was because their team chemistry never came back after Draymond Green punched Jordan Poole in the face. Mm. I think I remember saying something about that. Draymond saying if if we didn't have that beef, him and I, him being Jordan Poole, then we would have probably still, we, we'd still be playing right now. Yeah, he was like, I could have helped him be in his zone more. I could have helped him, like, uh, when he's hot, we win. Like, it's a fucking weird, it's annoying that it's like that because we have Steph and Clay and Draymond. Like, but when our. Four- when we have our Y factor come in, it's like, you know, like our Z factor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, then we can't lose. We can't lose. Yeah, but he's a fucking. Uh, He's he's like a an annoying rhythm shooter. Like he's not in rhythm often, but when he is, he's super hot. But it's like he's touchy. Like you got to keep mm. him in his right place, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he was like, as a leader, I should have been the, one of the people that was like keeping him in his right place so that he could fucking just do 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 do. But I couldn't be that person for him because it was a fuck you thing to a degree, mm. and we never got like as a man, we never like it was a fuck you thing. Yeah, I'm not even hundred percent sure what the beef was behind them, but there was some sort of situation or drama behind Draymond Green and Jordan Poole. Would you like to teammates. speculate with me? I'm the, <laughs> I have no idea. I th- was it involving a woman? I wanted... Was, was the wow. woman involved? <laughs> wow. That's hilarious. Just like in any regard at all. You know what I'm saying? I think... Probably. I think that Jordan Poole probably is like... Well, I don't know. I might be projecting. But I feel okay. like... <laughs> I feel like Jordan Poole... I love the awareness. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jordan Poole is like... Uh, like uh, annoying as fuck. Probably. It feels like he's like overly... Like if if women were so? yeah for sure he just has that energy of like I don't know bro I haven't been exposed to enough of his film of you know his human to to say one way or another he just remind, I'll take your word for it he reminds me of we'll he, speculate here yeah I'm <laughs> speculating no. we're speculating his energy doesn't seem like he's exactly like a resolute style I don't know it feels like he's probably like annoying sometimes in the locker room and then Draymond's like. Maybe his play is a reflection of his inner energy. Yes. It's kind of finicky. <laughs> yes, finicky is a great word. This is what we're looking for. It's hard to describe exactly. It feels like uh, he's not exactly like... Speculatively. Speculatively, not super mature in that regard. Okay. And then Draymond, like... I mean, yeah, when he wants to handle business, he's just going to get like five or six fouls in the first half to get a couple texts. He's cool with getting thrown out in game two of the playoffs. That's how he handles business. So then that Draymond? guy, yeah. Okay. So then you put that guy. It's like kind of. Well, Steph can't hit uh, that guy in the face. Clay can't hit that guy in the face. Or like, it, it, I feel like that fell on Draymond's shoulders to deal with the Jordan Poole problem in the locker room, and then. Okay. And then here's the LSD psychedelic part of life is that Steve Kerr had to watch Draymond Green hit Jordan Poole in the face. Yo, <laughs> isn't that nuts? Isn't that nuts? His life. He's, he's yeah. He got to watch it not play out well. Right. To see how how to not do it, how to not reconcile. Oh my god! And gosh. what the consequences of that were? It, 
And maybe that maybe the part of that is is I don't think Steve Kerr really appreciates Michael Jordan like he should. I think there's a part maybe of him. He does. Okay, for some reason we're speculating, speculating <laughs> speculatively. I think that he's a little bit embittered by the. I mean, it just doesn't seem like in the documentary he fucking really rocks with that guy. Like you hear other people like in their voice and the way they talk about him, like it's this fucking dude. Mm-hmm. But Steve Kerr, it's a more complicated emotion. It feels like part of what he's doing with the Dubs is like proving a fucking point that they didn't need Michael Jordan to be the best team ever. Which is kind of crazy because maybe they're right. Maybe he is proving a point to the universe with that. And then he was presented with this reciprocal problem in his own life in regard. It's just... I think Steve Kerr might fuck with Michael Jordan, but who knows? I'm sure he loves him. I'm sure he mm-hmm. loves him. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like part of his energy is like... Got that boy some rings. Got that boy some rings. He did get him some rings. Yeah. Steve Kerr got him a ring. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? like yeah, Burying buckets, boy. Yeah. like I'm not hating yes. on him. Just... It, in the Steve Kerr has a four peat. You know, he, he he hit the three with Michael and then he hit the Spurs after that. Damn. See? He hit him with the four peat. He got some legendary that shit. That guy on got his hit DNA. in the face and he took some some of that legend DNA with him. Yeah. I think there's not like something to that, but like something to that, you know? Hundred percent. Oh man. What are we talking about? Lost our thoughts. Psychedelic experience within Michael oh, Jordan. Steve and- Kerr getting punched in the face and then having to redo that over again. But uh, I want to be like Mike. A winner. You want to get some dubs. I think you need to be trying to get dubs in whatever field you're going in. We talked about that before. It's nature. It's nature. It's just like... What do you mean? One thing we talked about Winning? too. I liked when we were talking about how Jordan Peterson was describing like a heaven that you have you should pursue and a hell that you should be like running from and i think that it was described to me when i was in high school football that Mm -hmm. you either go up or you go down every day like every day you either get better or you get worse but i remember i remember coach saying something like that right common motif high school sports right i think it's just true metaphysical Uh, truth yeah 100 percent. i think it's been said been, been said in coach coach history for a while because I think they've been able to see the the truth within that as like an obse- uh, objective observer of what is a team, whatever whatever you constitute a team to be, whether it's like a staff at a restaurant or a, a roster of players or like your family or your partnership, like whatever you deem to be a team. It's like you get to watch that from the outside and you get to try to make it better. That's, that's your entire objective is to make it as good as possible, try to win as many games as possible. And you're able to see like – the daily, it's like watching the stock market. <laughs> it's like, we're down right now, y'all. We're down bad right now. We're playing like shit. We're playing like shit. Locker room feels like shit. Practices feel like shit. You look like shit. <laughs> Just bad all around. Yeah. So they're able to see kind of like uh, the truth within maybe like the microcosm of like how important it is just like for one practice. And like to string together a series of like really good practices, and they're like, now we're like now we're getting hot, and then like they start winning games, and now they're on like a seventeen game win streak. It's like we're popping the fuck off, undisputedly we're popping off right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important. <laughs> we need to keep showing up. That's how it happens, right? But yeah, I think that translates directly to life. Yes. And it's a swell of doing things right. It's like you notice it when you get when you get your act together, things get better. Like it just is true, you know what I'm saying? You don't act more disorderly and things just like start turning around. You, know? yeah, you, <laughs> you can't be missing, skipping practices, like half-assing practices, and expect to be winning games. Yeah, it's like oh man, metaphorically. I really started uh, lifting less, like less often, and being really less disciplined with my diet, and I got way stronger and way more yoked. Like it's, no one's <laughs> ever said that. It's, it's just not, not how, how it works. works. God, I'll, not how it works, dog. I think everybody, everybody knows that too. It's across the everybody board. Knows that. So then, what's the upper limits of pursuing your heaven? Is is another deeper question. Mm-hmm. And how it, good can it be? I think I remember hearing Russ. I'm sure he got it from somewhere else, but uh, just like the idea of what if it could be better than you imagined? Better than you imagined, bro. Just like try to imagine the most wildest, outlandish. What's like my dream life look like? What's the the most crazy life that justifies all of this suffering that I'm going through? What would that look like? And then what if it could be better than that? Because <laughs> that's like the limits of your imagination. Then like what if it like God resides outside of your imagination? <laughs> you have like a limit to your imagination. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You don't even know what you don't know. Yeah. You have no idea <laughs> what you have no idea about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, dog. So something outside of your imagination that's what I'm saying, could be bro. better. 
That's what I'm saying, bro. It's nice. It's nice to think about these things. Worthy to pursue that heaven, man. We're telling y'all. We're telling you. It's worth it. Yes. I, the, I wanted to back off because I'm like, I'm starting to sound like a crazy person talking about pursuing your inner heaven. And it can be crazier than your upper limits of your imagination. <laughs> but like, I plan on selling out the Barclays Center with you, bro. Eight nights in a row, bro. Yeah, like stupid in Madison Square. Stupid, bro. Going I plan dumb. on that shit. Like, mm-hmm. I can feel it. What are the upper limits of the heaven you could pursue? Yeah, hundred percent. Oh my gosh, my dog is crying, Moby. I'll praise the most high. The dogs in the room cry. Shout out to my boy Moby crying. Calm down, boy. It's like that's some peaky energy, though. Okay, well he could just he could come chill with us. Okay, he's chill. What's up, baby? <laughs> Man, we love dogs, don't we? <laughs> some people don't. <laughs> right. Hundred percent. There was a, one of one of uh, Jazz's friends was over, and then like we had to put Moby in his like little kennel, like whenever she would be entering or leaving the house because she was like afraid more or less of dogs and some people that like that childhood maybe because yeah she's around 10 or so so maybe that and her will stay with her until she's i don't know forever potentially some people maybe already have that kind of association with dogs they've had one bad experience when they were young and then it's just like fuck dogs for everything (laughs) which is unfortunate because i think they're awesome it, they're beautiful things obviously <laughs> obviously like okay so there's so many things on my head okay um one that child's 10 yes on our previous podcast you described i mean granted you were he was painted in a heinous light okay but you described him <laughs> as a medium-sized dog to a 10 year old that's like a lion dude like a 10 year old that's a bear that's literally yeah, like a, a panther. certified bear <laughs> <laughs> 75 pounds. He definitely outweighs her. <laughs> and on his hind legs, he's definitely taller than her. A chihuahua thinks he's a large dog for sure. Oh, God, I, yeah. I guess they're... Because what's a greyhound is bigger, right? There's like 150-pound dogs. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I think I mentioned to you in the office the other day where there, were, uh, there was a, a giant dog. He's like in our office, in our workspace. He made he made Moby look like a medium-sized dog. Yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, I was okay. like, yes, my classification of Moby is medium, <laughs> medium plus. <laughs> that's correct. I saw a large dog today. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, that's so funny bro that's hilarious but yeah but, but it's, all, it's all relative to a 10 year old he's gigantic he's huge yes he's and a beast. so but the thing is is that like being able to befriend moby is like uh that's something that i think you should learn how to do as like a human like there's a way to have peace with that dog it's not hard for me like but i also think that some people like have you ever had someone one time someone came into my house and his energy was fucking like just rowdy it was like my upstairs neighbor's friend mm-hmm. and they were, I like let them in to get a water bottle or some shit like that. And then Tuck was like, what's up? What's up? What? And then just like went crazy you on dog. that dude. Yeah. And like it was, he was cool to me and then cool to my upstairs neighbor. And then he got to the other guy that had never been in the house before. And he was like, what the fuck? And then the dude was like, ah, to the to Tuck. And Tuck was just like, <laughs> oh, like shit. was like ready to go, bro. And I'd like not really ever seen that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like that dude did not befriend my dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How'd you remedy the situation? What happened? Well, I was kind of like embarrassed and kind of a pussy back then. So I think I like ran over to Tuck and was like, you know, more or less like, hey, like chill out. Like maybe you just like grab them and put them in my room. Seems like a normal response. Yeah. But like <laughs> in hindsight, I should have been like, hey, why does my dog not like you? <laughs> that, that'd be a little more weird, I think. <laughs> He's in my house. <laughs> hey, what's up with your intentions, bro? I think your subconscious is a little fucked. I don't even think you know. I don't know, man. I think there, there is truth in that situation as well. I think uh, my girlfriend had mentioned that sim- a very similar situation happened where they uh, one of their one know. of her brother's friends came into the house, and then her family dog at the time, who is pretty, I think it's uh, uh, Cosmo's dog or Cosmo's mom actually, was like the, their family dog, and uh, some like one of her brother's friends came over, and uh, just like that, the, the the mom was just like not having it, you know, and it's just like. Uh, I don't know. He like uh, was kind of not hostile, but similar to how Tuck was expressing, just like, "What the fuck, bro? Yeah. I'm ready to go on this guy. Yeah, I don't like this energy. I can feel something wrong with him to right. some degree, or maybe or that's whatever. how you can interpret it. Because I think that's more... how they were acting for sure. Right? Yeah, out of the norm for like just human to dog interaction. Because usually, like dogs, my dog especially, are like your dog in the past is like just chill, super chill. Yeah, with everyone, super chill dog. But uh, like, yeah, his mom was was not about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I feel like um, cause I so when I evaluate the Tuck situation. Oh, I, but sorry, but yeah, but, but that guy that she was not about it with, like, ended up like stealing from him later on. Uh, so she was see. like correct in that, and to some degree, like pointing in in that direction of like, hey man, I don't trust this guy. And they ended up like stealing from him later on. It's like, oh shit. 
What the hell? Dogs what have an a, asshole. Dogs have that gut feeling, man. I don't know. Different interpretation. They have different senses or yeah, different entirely different perception of life. <laughs> right. Existence. Who knows? Yeah. We got the human senses, they got the dog senses. I'm sure like yeah, like his nose and his sense of smell and stuff like that. It's crazy. Different to how we and live energy. Our day day. It's just like energy you can't Yeah. Who you, knows what they could see that we can't see? <sighs> or feel that we can't feel. One thousand percent. Think about that all the time with like animals and like things, <laughs> you know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Isn't that nuts? You know what I'm thinking in my mind? Hmm. Just energy is so it's such a real thing. Like energy that that's another thing about the psychedelic experience that I think helps me. The one reason I like to call it that is because like the energy is more true than the material. And I feel like I felt that when I was like tripping. Mm-hmm. That thing was just like the reality of that situation like you can't even like necessarily this stuff will go away like the the my hud of what i would see would get like blurry but like the things that i was feeling and knowing in those moments were way more true than any of the fucking material shit that it was like jim carrey world it's like mm. fucking this shit is fake like that shit is real 100 percent. but then in here like you don't necessarily evaluate all of your decisions on like energy based a lot of it's like survival need based and i think that it's like uh that's why pursuing it's hard your, to trust your like the inner matrix versus what's presented in front of you, the outer material world. That's what makes pursuing the upper limits of your personal heaven difficult. Is yeah. because it's like walking with a blindfold through like a storm, or like just so far running a marathon with a blindfold on, and then everything keeps telling you to like turn around. There's like a million things pulling at you to like get you to stop. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like the, your own the, entropy. The blindfold metaphor thing is yeah very accurate. Yeah, just like the idea of transportation with no <laughs> no guidance system other than the other senses. Yeah, the whatever's whenever you close your eyes, whatever that place is, and like allows all your senses to come in, your thoughts and your emotions, where that thing like generates from. Yeah. It's like that's more important than yeah, and kind of what you were talking about the inner matrix versus the outer material, whatever you see. Psychedelic experience for real. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, man, was there a... Moving on, was there anything you wanted to... Or any, any bullet points you care to bring up? Or we're kind of ripping, we're kind of ripping off the top. A little, a little different potty today. The waters are still warm, though. Personally, I like doing the... the waters are warm. Instantaneous creation more than talking about current events. Personally. Oh, yeah. I think that shit's money. What, what's on what's your mind, dude? What, what's been going on in your life? How's your, how's your life been, bro? Uh, it's been good. It's been really chill. It's been uh, doing the ting, working... Doing a lot of the potty and uh, video editing and that kind of stuff. But work's been really cool. I guess we were, uh, I think, I guess we had mentioned it before, but maybe we, we mentioned it in a lost episode. But we kind of switched jobs in the last little bit. And now we're uh, same type of job, but now we're uh, it's kind of more so training for that job. So during the training process, we're going through more like detailed information in regards to wine and food and like the just like details in that regard of, of like how the things are prepared and like where wine comes from. And that's, that's more or less been a, a large bulk of what we've been going through day to day for the last couple of weeks. It's like wine tastings, which is pretty tight. It's a whole world. It's so, so deep and people care so, so much about it. It's crazy. There's, it's crazy. We spoke about how like there's golf out there for people one day, you yes. know, dude, wine, whole fucking world, dog. Whole world. It's a whole thing, man. Greg Popovich, apparently, is really big into wine. Big wine guy. Massive wine guy. Shout out Pop. But yeah, it's been really cool. It's like... Uh, Gotta be into something. It's crazy. And it's like... Like, it's really regional. Or it's... That's like one thing I've, I've come to notice with wine. It's like, where are you from? <laughs> it's like a really big question in regards to like the quality of the wine. or like it Kind of like, what's the style behind it? Because there's like... Yeah, France is like kind of like the birthplace of a lot of different styles. Or I guess like Bordeaux and like those kind of grapes using that variety. Mm. And yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Like champagne's a whole thing. It's it's crazy, bro. It gets deep. It gets deep. It's just like everything. It's like everything. Everything could get, get that deep. I'm sure it gets deep with like coffee, <laughs> shit like that. But there's there's something to know with wine. People, wine. yeah, people fuck with it. Yeah, there's like it, a, yeah, there's like a certain like I don't know. It's like clout or like respect or it's like a sophistication associated with it yeah it's like that's fancy shit dog yeah that's a bordeaux blend what that's crazy dog and there's like um and it's expensive as hell 
That's the other cool thing about it. Yeah. It's like, why is it so expensive? Some of it's name brand shit. It's like the same thing as like buying Gucci. It's like Dom Perignon. It's like, it's like a name brand thing. That's why it's so expensive, partially. I'm, t- it's I'm just taking delicious. all this in with you guys. It's crazy. <laughs> this is because it's, um, it's valuable to know about. Like it's, uh, when you can talk about it with people, it also grants you like social access and uh, different, like people will not fuck with you if you can't speak that language. But if you can, then people will be like, oh, shit, this motherfucker's sophisticated. That's yeah. tight. And it is like a language. It's yeah. like to be able to say, like we're talking about, like, oh, this is from the left bank of, or uh, this is a medal from the left bank of uh, Bordeaux mm-hmm. or whatever. And it's like blah, 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 blah. So it's like you are, and like some some people would know what that means and would, and so that person could continue on in the explanation. But then it's like, uh, if, if they're speaking another language, you have to be like, what's that word mean again? Or you know what I'm saying? Like, could you translate that? Yeah, so like, like what the, the fuck and are the doing of about? the doing of that thing is like, oh, this guy doesn't know what the fuck's going on here. So it's like nice if they could just like cont- like do their thing, and then you could like follow along with them just in their language in this whole other wine world talk that they're talking about, and like be able to maybe even like interject or be able to say something that's like accurate or like funny or whatever or like comparative or it's like true. You don't have to give them much, but if you're able to like maintain that conversation, you definitely get some sort of respect points it's just it's just a world you can live in that world mm-hmm. if some people are like really invested in that world and you can't even like heavily fucking, yeah like it runs deep it's like generations generations yeah. of people have been growing these grapes on these vines yeah facts they're like you can't just go buy one <laughs> you know I mean, you could. it's I mean, crazy but yeah no no in that world especially it's like mm-hmm. a whole thing yeah man yeah it's like some of the vines that have been around in France have been around for like hundreds of years, like a hundred years plus. And it's like whenever you, they, the vines get to that age, it's like they develop their own characteristics and their own like flavor profiles to some degree. So it's like you can't just go start some vines up and have like fresh vines and be like, all right, I could, I could, I could rival France. It's like, nah, man, this shit, this shit runs deep, dog. <laughs> <laughs> this shit gets crazy, bro. I want that. Yeah. I was trying to ask that. If you're going to do that, you're, like, you're going to have to. I'm not sure how Jay Z did it because Jay Z has a line of champagne, and champagne is, in order for it to be called, I'm not even sure if it's called champagne because in order he, for he it calls, to be. He calls it champagne. Okay. I'm sure he wouldn't. Okay. If it, like on the bottle, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? On the I bottle, if, it, if it's like labeled champagne, it has to come from Champagne, France. So, and like, I'm sure in Champagne, France, there's not a lot of this real estate available to just go purchase like you probably have to buy it from somebody and like pay a lot of money for some shit or like get invested or get in there somehow so maybe jay-z was able to get some shit in france buy some real estate or like buy some people out or do some sort of deals and negotiations to be able to label his ace of spades champagne because if not then it's just like brit you know what i'm saying no i'm sure he did that's fucking hard that's hard as fuck it's crazy tom brady just did the same shit where he like took his Competed in the fucking Coliseum for decades plus, stacked bread at ridiculous rate, and then he bought a stake in the Raiders. It's genius. They're the that's the most valuable property in the NFL. They just I did see that. Yeah, Vegas, brand new stadium. Las Vegas, dog. Come on, baby. That's just ridiculous. Like I just feel like the being able to gamble there and the fact that you can now go to Vegas and watch an NFL game, like all of that shit is fucking bananas. Like, that's gonna drive the the way they sell the tickets there and like that team will be worth like in 10 years tom brady will have made all his money back plus some oh yeah so much like the arizona cardinals they might not um rise in value like that like i see I, what you're saying other franchises it's not as like safe a bet or like the estimated projection of 10 years down the road is not anywhere near as high as with the raiders no nah, exactly and then i think i might have said it on an early podcast or maybe it was one that was a practice podcast but um i think one of the smartest things you could do with your money especially if you're an athlete is invest in ownership of a team because throughout history those investments like no only the team like the seattle supersonics is like one of the only teams that if you own stake, collapse. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah what's the last team that collapsed the commanders were close i think Oh yeah, they had a rebrand, all that shit. They and, also had yeah. like, uh, like sexual ass- uh, oh, there's, harassment there's some shit going on within the organization and like ownership oh, and shit. Washington, yeah, they had to fucking burn it all. Damn, but they're, they're still they're still kicking Washington Commanders. So I can't. I guess what's the, yeah? What's the last franchise to close down? Because I guess what we're saying is that it's a smart investment. It seems to be that the the market's only increasing, right? Oh, yeah. People are making tons of money. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched, I think Michael Vick invested a lot of his money into the Atlanta Falcons. And the mm-hmm. other thing is that Michael Vick's good in Atlanta. 
Like, that's a nice place to invest a lot of your money because you can just exist there and get around. Like, people are going to fuck with you everywhere you go. And, like, his he made so, he made all his money back. Like, he's good. You know what I'm saying? And then there was someone who invested in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, like, uh, I think uh, Mike Allstott. He took, like, all of his money, invested in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and now he's, like, on M's because mm. it's just, like, that was, like, all in one graph showing how and then it showed all the teams evaluations of like what they were worth over 10 years and it was just like continuous growth sports don't stop yeah everyone there's more and more people are born every day and a lot of those people are just connected to sports fans a lot of people be watching sports growing up in sports we love people through sports so common they're also taking the fact that like the champion (sighs) hmm they're what? Like the the fact that we organize ourselves in competence based dominance hierarchies mm-hmm. and then we have like sports as this expression and outlet of that thing that's probably like the most glorified version of like the Coliseum type. Uh because a lot of times it's not like you don't literally compete for competence based dominance hierarchy, like you're evaluated and judged into one based on what your performance is at a task. But like in the Coliseum you literally compete against each other in competence based dominance hierarchy. Exactly. And then sport is the only one where most of the time where it's really like that, other than in like the like businesses competing like that. But like man to man, like <laughs> straight up, <laughs> like that's the only place. So and, and there's something about that that we're humanly attached to. Like I don't think we'll ever let that go. Or like because mm. there's there's beauty in playing basketball against someone, like one on one, like or, or in your matchup on the court. Like there's beauty in having to compete with that person, like. They want it, and so do you. And someone's got to be better. The iron sharpens the iron. For real. And then the wins and losses. Like, mm-hmm. and winners and losers. Like, that's, it just is, it's, it is isness. Nature. And then the NFL is a business that, like, has. Our business is isness, dog. <laughs> <laughs> they own it. They own it. They, they, it's worth bees. Mm-hmm. It's it's priceless to human nature. What is it? How are they accumulating all their wealth? What selling tickets, selling merch, uh, Broad- contracts on broadcasting, and then like the commercial spots for those. All that sheesh. FIFA too. That's another reason FIFA was so powerful. Uh-huh. It's the fucking yeah. We we talked about it before. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, yo. And then but yeah, that, conglomerate. <laughs> that is conglomerate. This. So that's why if you're – especially if you're an athlete. So like if Tom Brady invests in the Las Vegas Raiders, he can just walk in the building and everyone's like, oh, shit, it's Tom Brady. Like it's genius for an NFL athlete to reinvest his money back into an NFL team in my opinion. And then Tom Brady was smart enough to get like the hottest commodity in my opinion. Like you could have got the LA Rams, but they did dog shit last year. Like they're actually kind of down in ticket sales. Everything's going to be a little down over there for a little bit. They don't have a hot team. It's like Mm. Las Vegas is insulated. I want to go on New Year's to go to Las Vegas because the Colts are playing there. It has nothing to do with the Raiders. Like, mm. as a business move, I was like, this motherfucker's a genius. Like, that <laughs> money, he takes no He else. got some of my money. I, <laughs> my hypothetical money. I want to give him some of it. Right. So I can go see a game. Right. I'm feeding Tom Brady's pocket steel. Damn it. <laughs> he got me. No, but that's guys. Like, as a business it's a person, smart move. Fucking genius, smart bro. Move. Is he getting into broadcasting? Do you know? Tom Brady? Or is he just like more of an entrepreneur? Yeah, I don't think he, if he's he doesn't have to, and so I don't think he should. He can make more money doing cooler stuff. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Exactly. I know Matt Ryan's gonna do that. Okay, that that's I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that that's what I heard. I remember a quarterback was gonna be transitioning into that. I just because I know Romo. Romo went in there. Tony Romo, one of the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not sure if you want to call him a sweetheart, but one of their yeah one, household <laughs> name. Yeah, everyone knows Tony Romo, but he uh, he's in broadcasting and he got a bag. He got a big old bag for broadcasting. He's really good. I'm at pretty it sure too. he got yeah he got more. A uh, higher contract for the broadcasting than he did for, like, his NFL playing. Wouldn't that fuck you up? Right. Oh, fuck me up, bro. I guess. Now I'm just, like, talking about the game instead of playing it. I'm getting paid more. <laughs> See, that's his LSD. Get a bag, dog. <laughs> it's got to be weird to him to be like, uh, they're running they're running play-action draw, and they're going to throw it to the wire over the seam. I've seen this a hundred times. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> on the sideline, like, every every day. He's just, like, commentating on, like, practice. He's like, God damn, you're good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you should take that somewhere, bro. Yeah, he's like, you're going to be really good when you retire, bro. <laughs> yeah, he probably did. He probably watched all – I mean, the other thing is that when you watch film, bro, watching film will change your fucking life. Because mm. if you look at it, Eric Spolstra, for instance, another person that you can accredit part of his greatness to watching hours and hours and hours of film. Also, we talked about The Last Dance, um, Phil Knight. Uh, Jerry Reinsdorf, Michael Jordan, 
uh, all reasons that they were some of the most sharp people in the league at their time were billions of hours of literal film. And I think that Spolster was the son of somebody who worked in the thing. And then they got in 1990, he wanted a job because he played for two years overseas and he wasn't going to make it, but he wanted to be around basketball. And his dad worked in the organization, just got him a job. Boom. What kind of job do you want, kid? Hook it up, kid. For the Miami Heat, isn't that nuts? That's cool. This is Eric Spolster we're talking about. Wow, I didn't know that. Right, me neither. I just read this shit. And then uh, they're like, all right, well, we're, we need a video production department for like our film and shit. Um, we need someone to head that. Your kid head that. It's a kid. Videos. I don't fucking know. Give him yeah. the media job. He's techie. <laughs> yeah. And then he was then in, in charge of the film room. So like he watched film all the way until Pat Riley was literally ready to retire. And then when he was down to step down, the person that was down to replace him or like the person that they named was Spolstra. Hmm. And he had just been like, um, not a coach ever. He was just an organizational guy, more or less. Wow. That's so crazy, right? But just watched a shit ton of film. <laughs> I worked under Pat Riley. Pedigree. Yeah. Like if you're around greatness, you gain pedigree. And it is invaluable to be around greatness. Mm -hmm. I'm around a great person right here. Greatness, baby. <laughs> he fucking squared he takes me to places that's so naturalized to him and i watch him exist in the naturalized state of the greatness and that thing brushes off on me and i can't help but know what that naturalized state of greatness is and then now that it's in there i i can pursue it if i didn't know i couldn't pursue it i wouldn't know like i wouldn't know where to go away from and i wouldn't know what to go what to go towards there would be that's that's how i define pedigree is like you've been around greatness mm -hmm. so you know like what it looks like like you've seen transcendence like, you're like, you would know, like, these motherfuckers aren't transcending right now. Like, this is not, like, I'm not even tapped into my greatness right now. Transcendent behavior. But, like, the people that I have been around that are great, like, in those moments of, like, holy shit, like, this is some shit right here. We're not even close to that. But you don't have the wherewithal to ever know what you don't know if you never have, if you don't have the pedigree to have seen greatness like that. Mm, and, right. like, uh, it, bro. yeah, my fucking dog. dog. Yeah, bro. My fuckers want to talk about lifting weights, bro. Like, don't talk to me about lifting weights, <laughs> talk. Like, I mean, we can, but like, don't talk. Like, it's just like, I talked to, I talked to conversation. <laughs> the people like my. There's people that I look up to that are like so dedicated to a level that it's it's literally greatness. It's insane. And then because that, like, you guys give me pedigree and it's tight. It lets me walk in different different lines of life. I can speak a different language. It's the sophistication that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and it sucks because like, I do dislike the lack of sophistication in other people and like the languages that I speak. I don't really have time for all that. I'm not really trying to do all that dog. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then like, yeah, there's, there's a time and place to be trying to like teach someone along. But like, if we're like just moving with a natural movement of like rhythm of life, like this, that's not, we're not in a teacher student moment right here. Then like, I don't, I don't have time. To like be explaining all this stuff, like as far as like the abstract concepts with you and I, like whenever we we talk, we just like pick it up and be running with it and taking it in all different kinds of directions. But like if you and I were to be talking to this like any other person at work or at wherever at the gym, it's like we would there's a there's a we speak English, but there's a disconnect in so far as some of the symbols that we use to represent some of the ideas and abstract concepts that we understand or <laughs> are referring to. So it's like we we could be talking our language, but like if I'm talking our language to somebody else, it might be it might get lost, and then I would have to it would have to transfer to a, I mean this when I say this, and but because of that because I meant this, I'm really trying to say this, but it's like we could just talk and all that's ex uh, understood, you know, it's like sub sub subtextually subconsciously understood, for the most part, but yeah, if we're if we're trying to do it with somebody else or whatever the language is, if you're trying to talk to with wine or with somebody else about wine and they don't know the things, then you got to explain the shit on the way. It's got to become a and like something that, that takes more time than just talking about it. And it's yeah, you're just not trying to do all that. <laughs> you're just not trying to do all that, bro. Not all the time. Not all the time. Because yeah, my life is moving quick. Life is moving quick. Facts. Facts. We're doing something here. Facts. The Man. whole thing. So yeah, pedigree. Shout out Spolstra. Shout out pedigree. Surround yourself with some greatness. You have to. You fucking have to, yo. And I guess here's the other thing. The other flip of that coin is you can talk about the weather with anybody. It's like not difficult, right? Mm -hmm. But I just dislike talking about the weather. Like uh, I heard Andrew Schultz talking about it. Feels fake. Feels fake to have a fake, uh, uh, like a surface level conversation in the past time based on generalized <laughs> fucking social niceness. I guess. How are the kids? <laughs> It's genuine though. 
but, it is, but, but there it is. is. How's the weather? It's definitely a little bit more. It's like, eh. how's the war, brother? <laughs> That's what I want to know, dog. I'm like, hey, you got your demons under control today? How's the pursuit of that of that abstract heaven ideal? Yes. How's that going? Yes. Do you have any that... roadblocks? Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm literally... Yes, bro. That's we can the... talk about, like, because I'm sure the questions that you have on that pursuit are the similar questions that someone else has had or going to have or have already answered. So it's like, we can talk about it through that lens. Yeah, everything is everything. We're in the meta- metaphysical pursuit of our personal heaven. That's mm-hmm. the same. We're yeah. doing the same thing. Like, we could talk about... We don't have to... I don't want to talk about the weather. Talk to me about, like, how are you doing today? <laughs> Like, are you are you in the zone? Are you flowing? You're good? You're mm. tapped in? All right, bet. Lock. Let's go. go. Thank you for a little bit of that energy. Now I'm moving a little bit more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's hoop. Yeah, or it's like talking about the weather in, in regards of maybe uh, it's like, yeah, man, I was having like a kind of a down down weekend, but then like I really turned my shit around and got it back together. Now I'm like on top of my shit this evening and like it, it rained last night and now it's, I feel like like a, it's like a new, like a new birth, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm a new energy right now. Yeah. Oh, wait, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like. That's what's up with the weather, brother. <laughs> <laughs> talk good day. If you're talking my language, dog, that's yeah. just hard. Yeah. yeah, that's sick. No, but I don't know. I don't know. People be trying to chill. And then your bros, your toxic bros are looking to bullshit. Looking and, to bullshit past the time. Trying oh. to like the idea of just bullshit till the ship's over or bullshit till class is over. No. <laughs> no, I won't partake. No. No. There are times, there's times and moments where it's like the attitude of our, of our bullshitting is different too. Because people might look at us just like hooping and hollering and being jackasses. Like, I feel like people could see it that way. Just being loud and like not, not lasered in there. But it's, Laughing. Yeah, just like. <laughs> I've noticed that, isn't it like a, like a trademark of like people like not doing work? You <laughs> say if you're a boss manager walking around here. <laughs> like, hey. I'm crushing. You're obviously not working right I'm now. I'm crushing. What are you doing? <laughs> I just landed that big perfectly, I'm sir. Crushing. <laughs> no, but yeah, you're right. Back to work. Yeah, you're 100 percent right. That's mm. such a reality that we live in. And the bullshit. And there's a balance to it. I think you kind of need that fun, but you also need to be able to tap into it. You need to be like loose, but then whenever you need to tap in, you need to tap in. Sometimes when I'm laughing, yeah, you need to lock in, son. Yeah, there's definitely. I don't know. Sometimes it's just complicated. Jimmy Butler is laughing while he's doing what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like sometimes I'm just having, it's hard to compete with someone having fun. It's almost impossible. That's like a statistic out there. And so sometimes my brain's just like, when I'm trying to take it to that most upper echelon, sometimes I feel like white knuckling playing defense isn't as fun. Like I'm like, have fun, have fun with it. Like you need to be having fun right now. Mm. And like, uh, I'm not trying to literally laugh, but like, you know, ju- yeah, guess, you know, yeah. And I, I, I like, like ju- laugh through the pain. <laughs> yeah, when Julian's lifting really heavy weight, he gets maniacal. He's like, ha, ha, ha. I like, he's fucking like, <laughs> like a villain. Yeah, it's fucking, but yeah, like, you put it on its head. I feel the gravity of that moment. It's not just that I'm like seeing him laugh and it, like, that's not what moves me is like the audio processing of his laughter. Mm-hmm. What moves me is like the gravity of that moment is like him being like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, oh shit, no, like that's crazy. The, like, the metaphysical thing underneath it being like the transmuting of that suffering. It's like life is like, or within running or weightlifting, your body is physically telling you, like, I want to stop. I'm uncomfortable. I don't want to continue. And then you're able to be like, ah, ha, ha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Eric so like, to... I'm in charge here. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's important. Yeah. That's a, there's a lot of forces. But you have a snake in your heart, first of all. A lot of demons pulling at your heart strings. Like, there's a lot of forces within yourself you must contend with at all times. And, like, part of life is working through that shit. But within that, you have to be a dominant voice in yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I'm in charge here. Yeah. This is what's happening today. Yeah. Cause I, I don't. I remember taking L's. Like I'm gonna call in today. It's like I'm not. I just can't. I just can't. It wasn't literally <laughs> like that. But like when I look back on myself, I'm like, you bitch. Like that. That's how I feel about myself. Like I can't get it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm done. Fuck that. You have to <laughs> bury that. Bury him. Bury. Bury it. Yeah. So the the laughter because is because it uh, exists. It's powerful because it's more like like the transmuting of that energy. And shifting that and like the same thing would be like when you're running, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just in the suck. You're like just halfway through your run, you're going ten miles. It's like, oh my God, here we fucking go, dog. <laughs> and then yeah, you just like start like ah like start laughing at yourself going through the pain. Or you yeah, know? Yeah. You're like, Oh look at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh look at this guy. This did doesn't this suck? 
<laughs> it's so real, bro. Yeah. yeah, I remember. It's like detached from yourself, from all the pain that you're feeling, and like ob- observe it objectively. It's crazy. And laugh and smile. Be kind of lighthearted about it. It's nice to balance it. You need both, I think. I think laughter is very important in life. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Very important. For sure, man. Even for the hardest of hard motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smiley, you know what I'm saying? A bowl of nails for breakfast, and I ain't laughed in two weeks. No milk. <laughs> <laughs> and I ain't laughed. Like, what the fuck? I mean, like, there's a nature, there's a nature in you that is, hardness does want to do that. That's why you have to contend with that part of the hardness, is that you, like, so I'll be trying to smile more. That's how I contend with, like, the mm-hmm. part of me that would, like, be too cool, be too cool to, fr- or be so cool that you freeze. It's like an expression title the creator says, don't be so cold that you freeze. It's like the hardness factor would want to stone you all the way. And that mm. that's not good, though. Like you have to balance that with like laughter, lightheartedness. Lighthearted, playful. Yeah. It's important, man. For ba- I think like, it's important. Be a more massive energy force that yeah. balance opens up some shit. Yeah. And both the ways that we just expressed it, like like the lighthearted, playful laughter, then also the ability of like laughter. You could like, yeah laugh at something you know what I'm saying? Yeah. and in that instance we were talking about laughing at like the adversity or the suck and like the the, <laughs> the thing that you don't want to do getting just laugh at it. it yeah i'm yeah. getting riled right now it's, it's, it's crazy yo I, you wouldn't believe yo and then just like getting amped for it it's a real thing mm-hmm. yeah spolster says in his speech after they they got the game seven win in the locker room he's like saying some shit saying some shit he's like suffer like we just suffer and suffer and suffer until we win like that's the recipe. It's that simple. And I was like, oh. I love that. <sighs> it's beautiful. Truth in that, baby. It's just beautiful, dog. Like, yeah. I guess that is the is that the promise? Like, just carry your cross, and then eventually, like the you'll be good. You'll win. The psychedelic experience happens. Mm. Man. Speaking of which, shout out that the self self plug. Go listen to it. Tell your friends. What is that the self refer to? family. What's going on there? Popular question, FAQ. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I guess it would be maybe one one branch of idea uh, would be from our pastor kind of. He had, uh, I, not only from him, but with the idea within religion. I think it's a common motif. I think Kirk Franklin also had, had make, makes mention of it in, a, I forget what song, maybe it's Love Theory. But shout out Kirk Franklin. But just the idea that within the religious ties, it's kind of uh, emphasizing like less of me and more of God and like less of my will and more of like the overall, like whatever the thing is that's generating this entire experience, that thing that lies outside of my imagination, like I think that thing can do something better than my imagination. And I truly believe that. And the truly, I guess once that belief is truly accepted, then the acting out of that belief is trying to live every day with the subconscious and conscious intent of like, um, like I'm trying to pursue God's will. I want these things, but like ultimately I want God's will. And like, I think that looks like this, but I want God's will more than anything, but I have to conceptualize. I think it looks like this because I, I live here. <laughs> I exist here in this thing. Yeah. But separating the idea of uh, me versus kind of letting go and letting Jesus take the wheel metaphorically. Mm. It's beautiful. Something like that. But our pastor, Ed Newton, shout out. Made mention of that in the service, and then yeah, as I mentioned, Kirk Franklin's like uh, uh, loving you, uh, or something about like Jesus loving you will be the death of me. And I know it sounds kind of backwards, but that's how it's supposed to be. Something mm. like that. Some some yeah. verbiage like that. Yeah, yeah. More of you and less of me. It's beautiful. Yeah. I was like, Kirk, I get you, Kirk. I understand what you're referring to. That the self. Yeah. <laughs> let your let your imagination do its thing, but also more have more faith in the things that you can't see things you can't even imagine it's beautiful can't even fully conceptualize it's kind of scary super scary step out into the complete unknown it's like i have no idea how this thing works it's terrifying terrifying it's portrayed in a lot of movies it's written about in a lot of books it's always mm. described as scary being out in the middle of the ocean party no way no way yeah you too man absolutely we're doing this shit. Proud of y'all too. Keep moving. Don't stop. Keep going. Keep going. I'm with you. The other flip side of death to self that I like is it's like part of my spirit is like death to my enemies, like death to death to the things that want to stop me from expressing myself fully. 
like death to the things that are my adversity and death to the things that like oppose me from my my truest expansion but then like ultimately like your biggest enemy my biggest enemy is myself so it's like it's death to myself like to that mm-hmm. the like the thing that i'm suffering like the thing that that hates to suffer is a, is there's probably a more eloquent way to put it like the thing that is suffering that feels that pain i want that thing to kind of die so like um I put my hand on the stove to see if the Kanye West would sing the whole thing. But like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? To see if I'm finally free. Like if I can just be in a place and it doesn't hurt anymore. Like, uh, hmm. I don't know. I think that might be like part of transcendence, part of sanctification. Yeah. Getting to a place where the suffering is like bare minimum. Yeah. You're, you're just living life. Like, you know, when you're uncomfortable driving home because you've just been doing too much that day and like your pants are kind of hot and you're like, oh, God, I'm suffering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, I, don't, I think that thing might kind of just like go away. Like, it's just like acceptance. It's just like isness, just isness. And then I think the thing that happens when like the, or the, I feel like that's the death to self part. Like, the more that I just accept isness and less of like, it's like expectation. It's like the wolf theory. It's mm. the wolf and dog theory. It's like I let go of expectation to find better than what I thought. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, that's the, the the thing that expects. I have to I kind of like, in a hard way, metaphorically, I conceptualize it as killing that thing. Like kill the thing that expects, mm-hmm. and be be the light. Just be the pure light. Be the yeah. Try to reside with the objective observer versus like the emotional being that you are. Or you know what I'm saying. But also part of that looks like is like active protagonizing, like not antagonizing, but like protagonizing. Like I'm trying to be who I need to be for myself. That's, like, hard to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That requires, like, called forth action. So it's crazy that I have to, like, remove. But that's, like, this. so we described it as scary, right? It's, like, the thing that's afraid, I'm, like, trying to kill, like, not kill that thing, but, like, death to that thing. Like, I'm not going to be afraid. Like, I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, any part of me that's resisting that idea of a, full, a, more, a more full expansion because it's scared or uh, whatever, timid, unsure. Yes. Afraid. Yes. Yes, the part of you that when the pastor says, put your hands in the sky, everybody right now, put your hands in the sky. And the part of you that's like, yeah, yeah. yeah." But it wasn't always like that for me. I didn't always just go and put my hands up in the sky. Like, like it's the limit and I'm reaching for it. Like Uh when I was a kid, I was like, uh, is everybody doing this? We're going to, we're going to what? Will I be in the majority or the minority if I don't do this? <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to put our hands in the sky? Even whenever people would like, when I was super young, people would be like, can I pray over you? And I would be like, yeah, for sure. And then let's pray. And they're like, would you like repeat with me? And then they want you to say out loud mm-hmm. these things that like sound goofy. I don't know, bro. It's like it's it's like to to make myself vulnerable to the level of like I, like I'm discomfort. It's like I'm I'm scared. Like I don't know if I want to like put my just put my hands in the sky for God. It's so crazy. Like whatever that thing that's afraid to do that, that thing's got to go away. So it's just like mm. put your hands in the sky right now. You're just like <sighs> right here, bro. You know what I'm right saying? here. <laughs> like it's just like instant. There's no there's no separation from you and God in that moment. Hmm. If the self separates us from God, that's the thing. That's the thing we're destroying. I'm destroying. That them don't <laughs> get me go. gassed up, bro. Don't get me started, bro. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like that to that thing, dog. Let's go. So yeah, I think if you really because it's it's an aggressive. It's a lot. I'm a lot. I thought you knew. What's a lot? <laughs> our album cover and our title. It's just <laughs> death to self with the black suits on. Because here's the thing: is I love it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's fucking gorgeous. I think I love the branding. I want five years later we might say that was genius. We might say that was literal genius, boys. You guys can't even fucking conceptualize what you did for yourself there. We might say that. I hope so. I hope so too. I hope so. I think so. Shout out my future self. I love you. Love you, dog. Keep going. <laughs> oh no! Oh my gosh, that's gonna hit so hard. Um, um, no, damn it. Where was I? <laughs> Talking to my future self. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna have to hear that keep going from you, and he's gonna have to keep going, damn it. The branding, it was it was genius. Maybe hopefully five years from now. Yeah, yeah. But when I think about other people, when I think about you viewers looking at that as my friend, mm-hmm. you're like, Matthew and Justin are gonna drop art. This is tight. They're my favorite, my fucking friends. And I was like, death to yourself. <laughs> Die, bitch. <laughs>
I don't think you walk it like a walk. Hit my gritty like I'm jaw, like I'm Mr. Jefferson. I recommend you stop. Stop, stop, stop. It's like, I can understand that that's like, you're like, what am, what do my best friends do? It's like, we make black holes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like to a degree, like I understand. Um, but then also it's, fabric. it's crazy. Cause like, I love, it's such a, it's such a weird relationship with our fans. Like I love them, but I'm also like, cre- this is my artistry. Like, if I were a painter, I might just like draw some weird ass shit sometimes. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it might, uh-huh. it might be perceived as weird, but it's like I'm trying to do something here. Like, I'm expressing something here that reminds me of something else that I liked or I was inspired by. And maybe I even fucked up. But a lot of times we don't release music where we fucked up. But I'm just saying, like, I don't know. It's so much to have your. I wish I could just release it to the world and then have my friends hear it from the world perspective outside of the relationship with me. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you can't really ask people to do that. You know what I'm saying? They're my friends. 100%. It's a crazy relationship. Yeah, but it's weird for people like who are known or who have known and are in a closer knit circle with Drake and people of that caliber to like listen to their music. Or what do, they, what do you think they think? I don't know. He talks about bitches a lot. I think we... <laughs> I'm just kidding. In regards to our fans, I was like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I love y'all, first and foremost. That's it. That's it. But I think I love... I just love the making of the music. It's it's different. It's not like per, per se we're trying to make music for anyone. It's just like I just enjoy making music, and then I'm gonna show you guys the thing that I enjoy to do, you know. But then it it is, it does start to get blended a little bit. The line starts to blur whenever it starts to enter the idea of am I creating this or creating the music knowing it's going to be perceived by people versus just creating what you genuinely want to make and what you think sounds good. <sighs> It starts to blur a lot of artists. I think yeah. a lot of artists get lost in that, lose themselves, and start to become more poppy or more whatever the hell, more mass appeal But what's bad? Like, dude, Vital. Like, when I was at a place Vital. where... Vital! <laughs> oh, baby, you on Bible. Remember what I said when I spoke? Yo. Remember when I had my... Dude, like, yo. that I was in a place where, like, the waters were kind of like... I was seasick as fuck. And when, they played, when I played that song, like, the water stilled. And I was like, yo, like... I don't know, man. That song is like beautiful. You can only, it was such a weird, like you can only find it on SoundCloud. You know, I don't even know about this song. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I never heard about it until you showed me. Nah, but it's more, it's more pop. Like, I don't know. Like, there's something about that, like, oh, be, like, just like notes being carried, like melody. It's like soothing almost. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to explain. Uh-huh. There's a, there's a different part of my brain that's like rocking with that. Like, my energy gets like flared up by like a good guitar, like, <laughs> like when someone's going in like that you're like oh shit like 100 yeah and like i don't know absolutely i feel like there's just like and i want to so what i'm sitting here telling you i don't exactly know what the fuck i'm talking about these are just things i'm discovering within my own artistry of like different things i want to pursue and play with but it'd be nice if you guys just looked at me like i was baby keem if it was like oh yeah baby keem fucking put out some fucking like melodic shit or like he was talking about putting blood on the Coliseum walls. That shit was fucking nuts. Like, <laughs> Keem's off his rocker. That shit, that's fucking fine. Like, mm. but it's hard when I'm like, hey, guys. <laughs> like, are you ready to go crazy today? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like, <laughs> like when you have to see people that are, like, our fan base, the majority are, like, people I know. So it's like, uh, mm. like, yeah, imagine Lil Wayne being like, I could turn a crack rack to a mountain. Feel me? Don't you compare me because there ain't nobody near me. They don't see me, but they feel me. They don't feel me, but they feel me. I'm ill in. And then he goes to like his job at the bank the next day. And like, he's like, yeah, that's me. Like, I don't know, bro. It's like not tough, but like, it's different when it's just like Lil Wayne, whom we know to be like a rapper. Like when that shit comes from someone who's in that position, it's like falls into a different category of perception. I think maybe you're perceiving Lil Wayne as a rapper. Versus like says as, as like Dwayne or whatever his name is Dwayne Carter. <laughs> Where's the line? He's just What's a guy. <laughs> he's some guy you might just see at the bank. Is Michael Jordan just a guy? Yes, everyone is just a guy. But he's Michael or Jordan. a girl or a whatever. <laughs> True. Give a fuck. True. You are your artist though. Like you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great for sure. That's great. Damn, we're deep in this motherfucker. Wait, I don't think people. <laughs> I guess there are people who like view Lil Wayne or artists as just artists and like don't see them as the people. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I guess I I, I needed to let what you said sit for a second before I felt like it. You are just a person, but you are an artist. But like, mm-hmm. 
a stone, like, let's say you're a fucking carpenter, right? Like, when you're having dinner, like, you're a person. <laughs> like, you're not. Yeah, like, uh, if you're a doctor. Yeah, there's a part of you that's like. You're a person, like, you're eating a meal. You okay. don't want to be knee deep in a body. Uh-huh. And I'm kind of thinking about this shit all the time, dog. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? Think about what? There's not a lot of times where I'm just a person. It's like wasted time almost. I'm trying to like always be kind of like plotting this next move, like trying to make this thing happen, like uh, trying to stay on that obsessed level. Like Adam Sandler talks about in that movie with that basketball kid. It's like a lot of people are talented, a lot of people, but there's people that are gonna work hard and they're gonna beat the talented people. And there's people that are obsessed and they're gonna beat the people that work hard. It's like, so I need you to be obsessed, please. That's the more important thing out of everything you're doing. And like, I feel like well, all in. When, yeah, all in. Once you touch all in, you just gotta like, Hold on to it as long as you can. It's like as long as possible, for real. Yeah. And there's that's beautiful. That's why, yeah. I'm like, Lil Wayne's a person. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, it just happened. Like, yeah, you do have to be able to like perceive the nature of life, which is that we're in this fucking marathon. Like, we need money. We gotta work. We're fucking. We eat. We fucking poop. Obviously, if you yeah, watched we, the last podcast, <laughs> we definitely talk about that. In case y'all need some info. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I guess you you must contend with this. Yeah. But I guess in regards to people, our fans viewing us, I guess you say you, th- you think it's like hard or you think it's like a disconnect? Not, 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 I guess the, the the disconnect is more apparent. It just makes me feel weird. Mm. Makes me feel weird because like I'm a sweet person. But at the same time, I do feel that way about those things. Like it's too much shit chat. It's too much talk. Like. Yeah. I don't think we need to apologize for our music. It's freedom of speech. It's expression. I, and, it's, yeah. and it's true. Or like like it's our truth. That's the thing. We're not just trying to propagandize or trying to be cool or trying to hop into someone else's lane and like just be a mouthpiece for something. Like these are just like our genuine feelings and thoughts and ideas. Yeah, I'm almost I'm not apologizing. I guess like that that's so true that like it kind of ties back to the Michael Jordan thing. Is it's just like I almost feel bad that I'm like that. Like uh, I almost like but like that's my truth. Like I believe in that thing more than the other thing, which would be like, I guess, thinking like that, like, let's pass this time with a little more ease. Let's like, uh, we don't have to hold ourselves to such a high standard at every mm. giving moment. That's very mm. painstaking. Yeah. Let's fucking have a be- a balance of more like, uh, have fun. Like, come on. Like, relax, bro. Relax, come man. Come on, dog. Come on. Well, you need a shot, pussy. Chill come out. on. Get a shot. Get a pizza. Can you imagine if I was like that? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> I'm not. I won't be. Like, that's not... I separate the right and the wrong. Like, I've been around too much people trying to perpetuate greatness. and Like, I've heard it too many times and seen it play out too many times. Like, you know what's crazy to me is people be like, how come you don't want to come out and drink with us after work? And like, not in like an intrusive way, just like a genuine way, right? And mm-hmm. part of me wants to be like, dude, like five to seven, five to six days out of the week, I'm supposed to wake up, work out, do work, go to sleep, and do nu- nutrients during all that time so that I can make money and I can propel my body. It's like really in the whole day, I'm just doing those two things. And like, I'll be working on my mind trying to develop my craft. But in reality, like the net gain of all of those days is just those two things right there. Mm. And then you want me to go to a bar, spend money and, dis- and, and put t- toxins into my body, like shit that's going to make my... And lessen my sleep time. And lessen my sleep time. After I accomplish everything I'm supposed to do, after I sell out for that shit, you want me to immediately take steps backwards. In the name of what? In the name of what? <laughs> Truthfully, in the name of what? Speak. Like, like I, I get it. I get it. Like, we we want to have name friends. Of taking the load off. <sighs> Don't you want? Isn't that load heavy? There you it is. Want to take it off? There it is. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. The load of your existence. That shit's heavy, bro. It won't help. Wouldn't it feel nice to take it off? It won't help. It would, but it won't. It won't help. Not long term. No, like you have to wake up tomorrow, mm-hmm. and you gotta you gotta start playing again. And we understand there's balance, but the underlying, more underlying truth is that it won't help in the long term. No, it's not gonna. Because the game's still going. Yes, we got a fresh game tomorrow, and your head's gonna be. As soon cloudy, as you wake up, you're less tapped into your energy. It's also like uh, alcohol is well addictive, but also it's a depressant. Mm-hmm. And then like long term use of alcohol, like if it's like you drink. Like, if you drink three or four days over two weeks, but you don't really do that, then that's one thing. But if you drink three or four days over, like, 34 weeks, like, that depressant is in your system. Like, your baseline dopamine production is lower. 
Now, now it's harder for you to pursue that heaven because your reward system is fucked up. Like you're not getting positive reward Emotion, for doing good yeah. things. You kind of need to take that. The, the urge to take the load off gets worse. And then and you live with no load. Oh, 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 oh. This is what's at stake, dog. This is why I got to get in there and talk about. Ju- see, Tell see, dog. Tell this him, is dog. what the problem with me is, is that I love Tell you him. guys. But that he shit in you. Justin Jefferson is real, dog. Like. I don't want to necessarily take the medicine all the time. It tastes bad sometimes. Fucking telling the truth used to be hard. Like, mm. it's like, uh, uh, I, <laughs> why? I like, I get it. You're, we're all fucking tangled up in shit. And like, you don't want to be vulnerable and embarrassed and like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all that shit's, but like what's on the other side is just fucking like, it's just peace. Stable grounds on the other side of that. All, all the unstable grounds before that. And as soon as you cross over into the threshold of fucking reality, because it's the truth. You're back on stable ground again. Hmm. And it's so uh, just like part of the maturity process, I think, is figuring that shit out. It's fucking nuts, bro. So, yes. So, yes. Let's go. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I, but then that's why I don't want to go to the bar sometimes after work. Mm. And then Steve Kerr might think Absolutely. I'm a jackass. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Well said. And as I mentioned, there's definitely a balance. There's definitely a balance. You, it's because uh, the load gets heavy. And I think uh, Jordan Peterson had mentioned this also before. And uh, I guess I'm sure I've heard this in other sources, but it's the idea that a planned rest, because I guess Jordan Peterson was working in his clinical practice with people like lawyers, like hyper efficient people who are working 80 hours, 70 hours a week, every week for the whole year, years on, years on end, dog. That's what I want to hear from. People That's be going in on yeah. Wall Street or wherever the hell they work for law firms and crazy high level, high stakes, high money deals and transactions happening it's just high, high pressure high stakes and they're working 70 hours plus a week and but he says that those people are more efficient when they take planned vacations versus just like working straight through the whole year if they plan a vacation like six to eight months in advance and like take off i'm taking off this nine day span these nine days i'm taking this day like all this off and like just work the rest of the time like they're more efficient yeah overall I, in the long run that's hard you would think not because like the part of the mentality is like go 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 go, but there is a balance to it for sure. It's absolutely true. Yeah. But then it's really easy. It's a slippery slope. So it's understandable why the people like on the flip side of the coin we're talking about now, why this hyper efficient people working seventy plus hours don't want to take a load off. They want to keep on going. But the men or the the actual outcome is the truth behind it. You need some balance. You need some balance in all things. You need some balance. But it's a slippery slope. That's why it's hesitant. The the, the desire to take the, the load off there's a hesitancy there for the hyper efficient people because it is a very slippery slope you could take a load off one time and that could lead to there's no more load now and you lost your job uh, uh, so what's the balance seen it happen. flip side of both coins but i definitely prefer i think it's it because it is such, such such a slippery slope so enticing so easy to get lost in and it's costly it's so costly that I would rather stay on the other side of the fence and be a little bit more hyper efficient. It's no wonder. Why, it's no wonder why I'm cautious. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I'd rather you know lean toward hi, towards hyper efficiency than taking the load off. Also, because I've lost. I've lost. It sucks. I want my chips. I want some dubs. And when we're in that fucking final moment, those push dubs them down. cost the price. They cost the price. Bro. There's a price you gotta pay for those dubs. Yeah. And the, there's also a price you gotta pay for the losses. Oh. And that price is, I think, a little bit heavier sometimes, a little bit more costly sometimes to not do the work. I think Jim Rohn says that, one of the personal <laughs> development people. He's like, you think the bill for trying is hard? Wait till you get the bill for not trying. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had a, like, we need to get a green patch right here so we can just be like, beep, and play these clips. That'd be sick. I could throw them in there somehow. Oh, right? that's <laughs> ill. Yes. Jim Rohn's my guy, man. It's just true, man. I mean, I don't fuck Absolute know. truth in that. So, uh. We're gonna we're gonna wrap here in a sec. So keep 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 doing you, man. Any parting words for the lovely folk? I like that one. Keep doing you. Be that expression of you. Fully if you expressed be, you. If whatever you that be is. Good anywhere. Be a fully expressed you. Mm-hmm. Tell the truth. At least do your best to do that. Not lie. Aim high. Keep moving, man. Be authentic. Like it's worth it to try because the cost for not trying is so so drastic. Heavy words for you folks. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're about, dog. That's, that's what goes what on in my mind all the time. Yeah, that's what we're about, dog. This shit gets heavy. Yeah, but uh, strong motherfucker right there. Let's go, bro. Yes, sir. We got to do it, baby. We got to do it for bro. her. We got to do it for everybody. Well, I could go for another three hours, but I guess we got to get off. <laughs> yeah, we got to like, <laughs> continue so our much. lives. 
as do you. So keep going, keep growing. <laughs> we love you all very much. I'll see you next time. Peace. Bye. Rolling through the city to the light show. Really ain't no telling where we might go. I just took the switch, I'm in my.